Hi, I'm Carla Hall, and today we're talking pie. I'm gonna be making a sweet potato pie. You're gonna be making it with me. I love sweet potato pie. It is a holiday classic. We're gonna have some fun. So you're gonna wanna have your oven set at 350 degrees. You're gonna want two sticks of butter cubed in your fridge. You also are gonna wanna have five tablespoons of butter out. You don't have to cube that. Just sit it out. It needs to be at room temperature. And let's get out two eggs. So the first thing that I do for my sweet potato pie is I bake sweet potatoes. These are gonna bake until they're soft. It's gonna take about one and a half to two hours because you wanna make sure that you can actually press them in there if they're soft. All right, let's go in. You ready? Let's make some crust. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a third a cup of water, a half teaspoon of fine sea salt, it's fine salt because I want it to be able to dissolve, and a tablespoon of sugar. Because I'm making a pie, I want my pie crust to be a little sweet, that's why I use the sugar. And we're just gonna stir that so that that can start to dissolve. And we're gonna put it in the fridge. It's really important for everything to be cold for your pie crust. Now let's measure the flour. All of the attention to detail is really important. So let's make sure that our flour is aerated. So I'm gonna take my spoon and aerate my flour. You can do this with a whisk. If you don't have one of these canisters for your flour, just dump your flour in a bowl so that you have space to whisk it or to aerate it with your fingers. If you do have a sifter, sift your flour before you measure it. Okay, we need two and a quarter cups of flour, so I'm gonna spoon my flour into my measuring cup. Careful not to tap it down because all the work that we just did by aerating it, we undo it by tapping. Don't worry about piling it up, it's fine. Okay, and then we're gonna get a straight edge, just I have this offset spatula. If you have a knife, if you have a bench scraper. Okay, measuring. It's that easy. And it makes a big difference. Let's do the quarter cup. It's okay if you make a mess. Ready? Boom. All right. So the flour's in there, and let's grab our butter. They're nice and cold into the flour. Now let's toss the butter into the flour and then break apart any pieces that are stuck together. We want to make sure that each butter cube is all tossed in the flour. This is the cutting process. Now, instead of doing it by hand, and you know, sometimes you could do it by fork, sometimes you have that cutting tool, sometimes you can make pie crust in the food processor, which by the way, you can do this in the food processor. I, I happen to like it in the mixer because I feel like I have more control and I can see what's going on. Okay. It's the last piece, we break that apart. You see that? If I didn't break this apart and toss in the flour, this exposed piece of butter would then stick to the paddle, and we don't want that. Okay, let's get our paddle. Let's put that on. That's all set, now I'm gonna grab my water. All right, everything is all dissolved. If your salt hasn't dissolved, then take your spoon and just stir it again. All right, we're about to do this. All you need to know how to do right now is turn on the mixer. Not on high, just on medium speed. All right, so now what's happening, our butter is starting to get cut into the flour and we're gonna take this water and we're gonna dump it all in at once. How easy is that? So now, you see what's happening? The butter is starting to mix into that flour, and as soon as it all comes together, we're gonna have those pea-sized butter pieces, and then it's gonna come together, and then you're done. Okay? Uh-huh. 
three, two, one. You see that? Okay, we're gonna lift this up. Look at that. We take this off the paddle. Okay, let's just get this out of the bowl, all of our bits. Okay, look at this. This is actually enough for two crusts, so we divide it in half, and we're gonna make two discs. The reason I'm gonna make these round is because I'm going into a round pie plate, and I don't wanna to have to work so hard. If my pie plate is square or rectangle, then I would change the shape of the dough before it goes into the fridge. All right, so here's one piece of plastic. All right, two pieces of plastic. Now the reason I do this double pie crust, because if you're doing a pie, let's say like an apple pie, and it's a double pie, then one's for the top and one's for the bottom. Place that there, place that one there, and we're gonna wrap it. And then I use the plastic wrap now to press down and bring my pie crust together if it didn't come together. Plastic wrap is your friend. Okay, let's wrap that. And you can see those bits of butter, which is exactly what you want to see. The reason that you want everything cold is because there is water in butter. When the butter goes into the oven, that water creates steam, and that's what gives you your flakiness. Okay. okay. All right, this goes in the fridge. It has to go in the fridge for at least 30 minutes because it will allow the glutens to rest. If the glutens don't rest, that's when your pie crust shrinks away from the pie shell. Okay, let's get that in. So I'm only using one pie crust for this pie, so I use that one in 30 minutes. The other one can be in the fridge for about three days, or it can live in the freezer for up to three months. Now we just need to wait for 30 minutes. Pause your video, and we're gonna get to rolling out that pie crust. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Time to roll out our dough. I have some bench flour here. I take my flour and I just sort of flick my wrist, and I don't want to have a lot of flour. We don't want to add a lot of flour to our cutting board. What you don't want to do, sometimes um, we get into the thing of like doing flour like this. You have these clumps of flour, so just make sure that you are just flicking your wrist. Let's practice that. Flick, 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 flick. So now I place my disc in the middle, and I do a little, little flick in there, and now I grab my rolling pin. So I take a little more flour, I rub it on my rolling pin. Now, so we have space, bang your dough, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. And I'm gonna be doing these quarter turns. Okay, the only reason I'm doing that is so that I don't have to work so hard with my arms, although it's a little bit of a workout. So now, the one thing that we want to make sure is that we can move this dough at all times. We don't want our dough to get stuck on the cutting board. So I start in the middle and I push out. Don't roll over that edge right here because that tends to get stuck on the cutting board. I turn it around and then I start in the middle and I roll out. In the middle and roll out, okay? Make sure it can move. If, if you don't have any more flour on your rolling pin, just add a little bit of flour. Now I did that quarter turn because I've gone forward. Now what I wanna do, because I wanna circle, I turn it a quarter turn and I'm gonna roll out this way. So roll out. And if you wanna come back, rolling toward yourself, it's out, making sure that you can always move the dough. And then, at this point, let's just look at our dough and see where we need to roll it in order to make a circle. Okay. How does that feel? You see how beautiful that looks and it looks really nice and smooth. I need a little more flour. 
How about you? Do you need more flour on your rolling pin? Out. Okay. We're going to roll our dough to about an eighth of an inch thick. Look at that. Look how pretty that looks, and it's really smooth, and it's still really cool. If at any time your dough gets warm, pop it on a sheet tray and put it into the fridge, and just wait for 10 minutes. Before we continue, let's grab our pie plate. We want to make sure it's big enough. And again, making sure that your crust can move. So put it down like this. We need to roll our dough so that we have at least two inches all the way around, because this is a really deep pie plate. So I have a little more rolling to do. That's a good test so that we don't get to the end, and then we have to take it out and roll it again. So let's roll it some more. Making sure it moves. Let's do our test one more time. That looks great, right? Now we're going to move our crust to our pie plate. There are a couple different ways we can do this. We can take our pie crust, and we can roll it like this, and then roll it out. Or we can fold it two times like this. I find this to be easier. And we see where the center is, and we unfold just like that. Whatever works for you. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. If you have nails, then use the back of your finger and do this so that you don't tear it. Okay. If your pie crust gets warm, pop this entire thing into the fridge. So we see that we have a little bit that's going over the edge. We want to trim this, but we also want to keep just enough to fold under. You know when we have that pie crust and it's that nice thick edge? That comes from folding the excess under, but we don't need all of that. So we can take a knife or scissors, and I still want to keep about a half of an inch. So I'm going to start to cut around. See that? Now what we're going to do is take this that we have left and we're going to tuck it under. Just go all around the pie. It's looking good, right? So now, because I have this crimped pie shell, I can just make sure that in these ridges, I just push the pie crust down. We don't have to worry about crimping the edge, but I just want to show you a quick way of crimping the edge. So I take my thumb and my forefinger, I put a little flour on it, and I just press like this. This is a really easy way to make a crimped edge. And you can always use a fork, you can use a knife, you can go just you can do all kinds of different things. But for this, we're just going to make a really simple edge. The reason we're crimping is to make sure that the pie crust, when it bakes, it doesn't slide down. Okay. So we're going to take our pie crust and we're going to put it in the freezer so it can get really, really cold until it's time to make our filling. All right, so we have our crust in the freezer. We have our sweet potatoes in the oven, and those need to cook until they get soft enough, one and a half, two hours. I don't know how much time you have left, but now it's a waiting game, so let's pause and then come back when we can make our filling. Are you smelling that? That caramelized sugar, those sweet potatoes baking? All right, let's get those sweet potatoes out. So let's see if they're done. Yep, the knife is going through so easily. Check them all. Okay, let's let these potatoes cool. And also, remember to switch your oven and crank it up to 425. It was at 350, now we're gonna crank it up. All right. Pie crust out. This is plenty cold. The crust is really, really hard. That's exactly the way that we want it. Now I'm going to grab some aluminum foil. So 
So we're gonna blind bake our pie crust. The reason that you blind bake the pie crust is so that you have that nice, crispy, golden, cooked pie crust before you put the filling in. So I have my foil. I'm gonna grab my pie weights, alias beans. I just put them in the bottom of my pie crust. Now pie weights are generally um, ceramic balls but you can use anything to weigh down the, the pie itself. So you can use rice, you can use beans. If you don't weigh down the dough, then as the pie bakes, it's gonna flake up, which means that your pie crust is gonna be all bubbly and it will not be the shape of your pie pan. So in order to force the pie crust down, we put something to weigh down that process and we bake it like this. So we're gonna put this right in the oven the lower third of your oven is best so that the bottom, you really want that bottom to get nice and brown. This is gonna bake for about 25 minutes and then we're gonna take the foil out. Okay, into the oven we go. Cooking is all about timing and doing things with that downtime. So while our pie crust blind bakes, we're going to make our filling. So our sweet potatoes have cooled enough, we can start to peel them. If there are any visible eyes or any yucky parts to your potato, then just make sure you take that off as well. Can you see the difference between a freshly baked potato and what might be sweet potatoes in the can? This is much drier. Your filling will be nice and thick and flavorful and not diluted by water. When you know you're gonna make your sweet potato pie, you can also cook your sweet potatoes ahead of time. Oh, look at this potato, it's beautiful. I'm gonna grab a bowl that I'm gonna make the filling in. So I'm gonna transfer my sweet potatoes to the bowl. Now let's just mash our potatoes. Okay. This is so satisfying to me. So you wanna mash them until you can incorporate other ingredients. How are you doing? Is that arm burning yet? <laughs> okay, true story, mine is. <laughs> okay. You don't have to get it perfectly smooth because we're gonna whisk it later. Now, we just need to measure our sweet potatoes. We need two and a half cups. Just wanna get this measured. Grab a spatula if you need it to get them out of your measuring cup. Okay, let's get another cup. Okay, now we have another half a cup. Two and a half cups of mashed sweet potatoes. And we're gonna start adding our other ingredients. So I need a half a teaspoon of salt. I have cinnamon, a half teaspoon. A half teaspoon of ground ginger. This is all about taste. This is all spice. You can always come back and add more of these spices. You can add less, so taste as you go. Now we're gonna put in some nutmeg. I like to use the whole, and the reason I like to use whole spices when possible, especially nutmeg, because the fragrance is so nice. So you need a microplane, quarter of a teaspoon. Now let's get a half a cup of light brown sugar. Brown sugar is just regular sugar with molasses, so you're gonna get some of those really deep sugary notes. And I just pack it a little bit in there. Now let's mix. So I just push the spices and the sugar into the sweet potatoes. You see how the sweet potatoes are loosening up? Let's talk about the butter. The room temperature butter, when you're talking about it in baking, is about 68 to 70 degrees. It should bend slightly like this. It shouldn't just collapse. This is room temperature. So I'm gonna put that in. And I am just gonna slowly incorporate that in. 
I'm going to move my whisk aside and come back to it. Now I have my spatula getting all down there, the sides. Now let's add our eggs. If you're a little nervous about cracking your egg and putting it into the bowl, crack it in a smaller bowl so you can make sure that there are no shells in it and then dump in. So I have the two eggs here. I do it one at a time because I want to be able to incorporate the egg. Because as you can see, when you incorporate liquid, everything separates. But we're going to keep stirring. It's going to come together. See that? Let's get our next egg. All right. Crack. I'm putting it over to the side so if there are any shells, I can see them. You see how the color is lightening up with the butter and the egg? OK, I'm going back to the whisk because I'm going to add in our evaporated milk. Evaporated milk doesn't have as much water in it. I'm going to pour in a little bit at a time just to incorporate it with our whisk. You see how I'm working over here on the edges of the bowl? I don't try to incorporate the entire thing at once. So I don't want to fight with my bowl or the sweet potatoes. Okay, let's go in with some more. Okay. Are you smelling that? Gentle. Whisk gently so that doesn't slosh out of your bowl. All right. I think we can finish it now. OK, you just want to whisk everything together. And you see how it's loosened up, but it's still rather thick. That's going to be a delicious pie with wonderful texture. And it's OK that you have some of those lumps. Those are going to be perfectly fine. It's going to be so delicious. So our filling is done, and it's quite tasty. Let's go check on our pie crust. I think it's time to pull it out. Carefully, OK. So I'd already started to smell it. And you can see how the crust was getting a little bit brown here. And just be really careful. Use the mitts if you need to, because these are hot. And the beans are hot. You want to make sure that you keep everything together and carefully remove those beans. Let them cool before you put them back into the container. So look at our pie crust. You can see how it's all brown here. Right here inside, there are some wet spots where it's not quite cooked. This is why you go back in for five more minutes. Okay, Carefully. OK, it's time to get our crust out. So now we need to take our hot crust and let it cool down because we have this room temperature filling. If we were to put the filling into the crust now, all of the work that we did with that room temperature butter, it would melt and it would ruin the texture of our pie. It's nice and cool. Okay, so we're just going to fill our pie. This is going to be so good. Let me get my offset spatula. So I'm just spreading out my filling, because it's fairly thick. OK. And you don't have to worry about any lines, because they're going to bake out. So our pie is going to go in. It's going to go in still at 425 for 15 minutes. And then we're going to lower the temperature to 350 for about 40 minutes. Let's go in right now. Let's check our pie. If you think that your crust is good, Leave it in the oven. I'm going to take my pie out right now, and I'm going to put some foil on the edges. It looks so good right now. This is the perfect brownness. So what I'm going to do is take little strips of foil, and I'm just going to crimp it around. It's hot. Don't burn yourself. But this is going to keep your crust perfectly brown. Just have like two inch strips to go around. All right, so let's get this back in the oven. Let's 
get this in. Let's put our pie on a baker's rack because it's really important as it cools for that air to circulate all around the pie. Oh my gosh. Oh. You're gonna wanna let your pie cool for at least 60 minutes. With a first slice, it really helps to make three cuts because it makes that first slice come out much easier. Oh, it's cutting so nicely. Okay, that's my first cut. My second cut. Do my third cut. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and get my pie out. You ready for this? Look at that. Come on. Right? I know. I'm so happy for you all. Okay. Onto the plate. This has been so much fun. And now it's the payoff. The textures of the sweet potato pie with those little, those little bits of sweet potato. This is exactly what I loved about my grandmother's sweet potato pie. I'm gonna dedicate this slice to my granny. Thank you, granny, for these memories. And thank you for cooking with me. This has been so much fun. I hope you're enjoying it.